Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. So I would like to thank the organizer for the invitation to this very special conference and to very special places. It's really my first time here and everything. It's a great being here. Okay, so I uh, would like to talk about... Uh, okay, I thought it's working. Oh. <laughs> Maybe I. No, I don't see the light. What? Uh -oh. oh, sorry. Maybe. <laughs> no, no, no. It's my. Cl I click in the wrong. It, it's yeah. Okay. So I sorry. I was clicking in the wrong place. <laughs> okay. It's about manifold with the integral curvature bound. Okay. So. Uh, since uh, integral curvature may not be, uh, people do it quite often. So I would first introduce uh, what is the integral curvature and maybe why we want to do it. And there's uh, quite a bit of early work and recent work and application and uh, maybe a few things about uh, the proof. Okay. <coughs> so first, uh, well, even though uh, I guess we haven't actually been Thanks, Zhang Robin's talk in the morning. He already introduced, kind of mentioned the integral curvature, even though we haven't defined uh, quite uh, officially. Well, it sounds, should be something weaker than the pointwise curvature bound we will consider. And as uh, Robin mentioned, you know, it's uh, occurred in Gauss Bonnet formula and uh, quite of uh, like also in isospectral problem or variation problem. We see integral curvature is related to uh, other quantities in this uh, case. So actually, uh, recently I got interested in this. It's also in rich flow. <coughs> uh, naturally, if you look at the Keller rich flow, then it always has a L4 bound on the rich tensor automatically. In this, uh, so this is Tian and Zhang Zhenli's work in the uh, 2016. And then this has been uh, extended to first the four-dimensional rich flow. Uh, if you assume scalar curvature is bounded, which is automatically satisfied with scalar rich flow. Okay, so uh, Rich Bandler and uh, Zhang Qi and Miles Simon, and uh, later on and uh, extended to, I'm actually not resting in time, to uh, Bamler. And Bamler's work actually is really motivated from uh, so we see it before in the morning, work of Chiga and the neighbor and uh, uh, Zhang and the neighbor. They were saying that if you have uh, rich curvature both side bound and non collapsing, then you automatically has L2 curvature bound on the integral of the curvature tensor in this case. So this is kind of extend to rich flow when you assume the scalar curvature is bounded and the entropy is bounded. So uh, in those uh, case, you automatically have some kind of uh, integral curvature bound, okay, in this sense. <coughs> okay, so now let me see, uh, yeah, what is integral curvature? So usually, okay, we will just uh, say, it just takes a sectional curvature, you take the maximal both sides and integrate, as it becomes a function, and takes a norm, right, okay. And this, so it has a power, and uh, when p equal to n over 2, it's very special because then this quantity is actually scale invariant. If we do scale, curvature scale and the volume scale, and they compensate each other when it's the middle dimension, so which is uh, very special. Uh, so this quantity you can think about extension if you have sectional curvature pointwise both sides bound, then you consider this one, okay? But lots of work is we interested in what if you just have one side curvature bound and what is the corresponding integral curvature? <coughs> so most I'm going to concentrate on actually uh, rich curvature, the lower bound and the rich, you can do with the rich curvature or sectional curvature, not too much difference. So I'll just concentrate on rich curvature. So rich curvature is, uh, so what does that mean? We want to say rich curvature is bounded from below in some integral sense. <coughs> Okay, so first we uh, take the rich tensor, the smallest eigenvalue, so that it's become a function, so we can integrate. So then you want to measure the amount of the quantity below 
any H is your reference. So it's like a, instead of the rich curvature greater or equal to uh, some pointwise bound. So let's say the uh, the the low the eigenvalue is like this. So you take uh, some reference. <coughs> The H, let's say it's here. Uh, okay, so then the part you try to integrate, maybe this is here. The part you're trying to integrate is just the amount, okay, not too much, it's in here, and this part, below the H part. So this is a, the reference. This is, will be the H, but it will be new level, like at here it will be zero. But everything below, we try to integrate. So it's measure amount of the measure amount of the uh, rich culture which lies below this uh, reference. This level is m minus one h. It's in so if it's above this, then it becomes zero. So this it's a zero point, and the amount below that part. Okay. <coughs> so compared to the pointwise curvature case, so if you ha do have pointwise rich curvature bond, then this quantity is exactly zero. Okay. So the how much the rich curvature lower bound fails is measured by this uh, integral curvature. So exactly. Right. <coughs> so in general, we can do it as an integral uh, on the balls. This r is the radius of the ball. Or the, uh, so my p is the power. So usually the x is the center. And if we take supremo, then all you can if you refer to the point center, then you put the x here. Or you can integrate on the whole manifold, so we can be try to localize it too. <laughs> uh, that's uh, the usual thing. Actually, uh, later on, uh, we will set uh, we want to consider the collapse case. I think in the collapse case, the integral culture it's more natural to consider so-called the normalized integral. Namely, the, in, the average, so integral, you integral, but you divide by volume, the average integral. Because you want some this kind of quantity uh, small, and if you have, a, do, do not have normalization, you just, maybe it's just collapse, your ball is very, very small, the integral will be small, and that will not tell you much. Instead, you require the normalized one to be small. That's a more natural assumption thing for, to deal with a collapse case. <coughs> And for this talk, I'm going to concentrate on uh, h equal to zero, just for convenience. When h equal to zero, then I consider this quantity, which is, uh, uh, okay, so once we normalized, the volume is canceled, this quantity is scale like curvature now, just as a usual curvature. So then I multiply by i square, so that this is a scale invariant. So this, this is uh, for, for any power p, this is become scale invariant quantity. Okay, so this may be the code I'm going to use. Is the basically normalized integral culture and make it a scale invariant. <coughs> and so this depends on the point center point, and if we took out the point, then this is uh, everywhere on the R. Okay, so it's uh, really, uh, again, amount. so I'm using just uh, for h equal to zero, so otherwise the scale is a little bit differently. So h equal to zero, it's amount which lies below the, so just uh, that's why it's a low negative, just how much the rich curvature is lying below zero, that's we consider, okay. So then the focus uh, of the problem is to consider, you know, we have many, many results about manifold with pointwise rich curvature low bound, can we extend it to integral curvature, which is of course a much weaker assumption, integral curvature lower bound, okay? So that is a, a general, a bigger idea, a bigger, bigger question in this case. And uh, as always, I guess the short answer is always sometimes yes, sometimes no, okay? And uh, I guess the usually the no question, no is usually easier, so I will start with uh, what's not uh, working, okay, in this case. Actually, any questions? Before we start. <laughs> okay, so let me uh, indicate. Well, act before this, maybe I will just say there is uh, uh, lots of works, only works, and uh, I think even I this is not complete. It's just uh, going to be somewhat relevant to my talk later. And Gallot and De Young first they started on work on integral culture, and Peterson and myself I'm going to talk 
work out some comparisons for integral curvature and uh, also uh, joined with Day, myself and Peterson, we have some pinching result and Aubrey is a former student of Gallaud, had some work on it and more recently Tian and Sun on the rich flow part and extended it in this. So, and another part of the category, actually we kind of see it in the morning, Anderson has work on the, you know, epsilon regularity of rich curvature and Anderson Chiga uh, <coughs> on this finiteness result and Chiga, he has a paper on himself in the GAFA, has lots of work Okay, so the, maybe uh, the difference of the top and I divide into group. The top group usually only assume uh, integral curvature. There's no assumption about point-wise curvature. In the bottom is, they usually assume the, uh, some kind of uh, point-wise curvature in addition to integral curvature. So it's combined together in this case. In the Instead, here usually we only deal with just the integral curvature. Okay, so I guess we can study in two different classes. Okay, so first one um, said why it does not extend trivially. We can just uh, see from this example, <coughs> namely uh, as mentioned in early morning's talk, uh, Chiga's finite theorem. One of the key is try to uh, extend under this uh, class. If we have pointwise section of curvature bound, then the length of closed geodesic is uniformly bounded. It cannot go to zero. So you have non collapsing volume and pointwise section of curve jump bound, then it cannot go to zero. But if you replace the uh, pointwise section of curvature just by integral curvature, <coughs> then so this could happen. This is a dumbbell kind of uh, thing. Is for any p, actually, it doesn't matter how, how powerful the p. This uh, picture, the dumbbell is, which looks like this. So the lens is epsilon. So you can close up by this both sides. Uh, on the, but the epsilon goes to zero, so it's uh, the lens of this closed geodesic shrink, getting smaller and smaller to zero. But the LP curvature stays bounded the, all the way, okay? So therefore, uh, therefore in this case, uh, you know, one of the things is the volume doubling for analysis very useful, which is also not true. So if we just add uh, just the integral curvature bound, it may not just work. And that's the answer, which is a no indication, okay? So we need to phrase it differently. And, but actually, <coughs> and you can make these um, more complicated examples out. You can make it to have infinite topology. Actually, so it's, uh, and but there's uh, more work. Okay, so this is uh, just a one, no example. There is lots, lots of uh, yes uh, extension. Okay, one of the key is to refer to the Laplace comparison. So for uh, for rich culture bond, one of the two is Laplace comparison, which is uh, very useful. Okay, so maybe I already have it here. The usual Laplace comparison is if you have rich curvature lower bound, then the Laplace of the distance is always less or equal to the Laplace of the distance from the model space. So this is the Laplace is the model space. So if we have h equal to zero, then we know the Laplace of the model space when h equal to zero. Uh, you can compute explicitly is just uh, m minus one over r. <coughs> so the Laplace i is a distance function here. I is distance from a point. R uh, x is the distance from some fixed point. <coughs> okay, so if I uh, if I rephrase the uh, this uh, I want to introduce because later on we don't want to assume any rich curvature bond. So Laplace, this kind of thing will, uh, will not hold. So I'm going to introduce a quantity, Psi, which is uh, measures how much Laplace comparison felt. Okay? So this usually it's less or equal to this, but it may not be less, so this quantity it will be positive. <coughs> So this is amount, it's going to be great, instead of less, it will be great this. This is amount of the Laplace comparison field. So that then, in the pointwise case, we can say if the rich curvature 
has no below zero part, then the Laplace field is also zero. Okay, so if the rich is greater or equal to zero, the amount of the rich, uh, the Laplace comparison field is zero. So I rephrased the Laplace comparison in this sense. So now we don't have this pointwise curvature bound. So, but the Laplace comparison still holds in the following sense. <coughs> Namely, this is amount of, remember, the Laplace comparison field is completely controlled by how much the rich curvature lies below zero <coughs> field, okay, in integral sense. <coughs> so in this part, it's very important that P is bigger than N over 2 in the integral, otherwise it's not true. So this is, uh, uh, remember this recovers the usual Laplace comparison because usual Laplace comparison saying if this is zero, then that's zero. And now you're saying how much is this felt, the Laplace comparison felt is exactly controlled by how much is the rich curvature lower bound felt, okay, in the exactly the power. So here there's no assumption about rich curvature at all. It's a completely general work for any manifold with no assumption, right? <coughs> In the uh, so here it's a, you can I maybe state only for h zero but works for any h in this case. So the key to obtain this actually is play with this ODE. You can have this Riccardi type ODE estimate, and you got uh, uh, actually motivation in early work. Actually, we trying to do some kind of comparison for sectional curvature, which also works, and then this rich curvature. <coughs> Well, once we have a Laplace comparison, it's a standard that it relates to the volume comparison because the Laplace of the distance function is related to the, di uh, relate to the uh, change of the area of geodesic sphere. <coughs> this is given by Laplace of distance function. If I look at uh, the point, the center x0, and look at the geodesic sphere, and write the volume element as uh, a polar coordinate, Then uh, the the volume element the a the log limitic derivative of a is exactly given by the Laplace of the this r. So therefore, if we have some control of these, we naturally expect we have some control on the volume. Okay. So and that is a usual and which is the case uh, for the volume. Since it's integral, it's a little bit more uh, complicated, but uh, we have so. Now, okay, so I only stated for h equal to zero case. So h equal to zero, the volume of the ball compared to the, uh, so this is the R ball, the big one. It's the before, uh, the usual volume comparison is that this ratio, right, it's monotone. <coughs> it's monotonely decreasing, so it should be less or equal to zero. But instead of less or equal to zero, we have less of this amount of the rich culture which failed from zero. Okay, in the, um, okay, so that's again, amount, so in this uh, statement, again, there's no assumption about the curvature at all. It's completely general manifold. So it's always true. This is always true. So if I have this equal to zero, then it recovers the usual volume comparison. In the <coughs> okay, for doing analysis, we actually more interested in so-called volume doubling. Namely, we want to control the volume of the small ball over big ball or big ball over small ball. This is a ratio we would like to control. So if you have this twice, this refer to the volume doubling, the ratio. So if I need to divide this over, actually divide the big ball over to the small ball and rewrite it on the top, I got the following. <coughs> and in this case, now, okay, when will be this useful? Notice that. This will be, so we will think about this as a so-called error. This is, before it's zero, now this is how much error we have. So this, is, okay, so that's the thing I introduced in the very beginning, is a normalized rich curvature and by scale, make it a scale invariant, okay. So now this is one, so this will be only useful when this error is small, otherwise it's not telling us anything, right. This is greater or equal to this part. So. In order to have volume doubling, we notice that it's even this, you need some kind of the error, you cannot be too big. It's just bounded, it's not enough. As we showed in the dumbbell example, it's volume doubling does not hold. So, but 
if we have this is small, then we have the volume doubling. Okay, so that's uh, uh, very useful in, in analysis in order to do it. So maybe I, <laughs> so that's, uh, these are uh, uh, in the earlier work, uh, joined with Pete Peterson in 1997. <coughs> so, uh, Pete is a, yeah, okay, so we, here we stated for the balls, it also works for geodesic sphere in the, just to look at the area of the sphere, similar result works. Okay, so just to yeah, repeat what emphasized, we said if the error equal to zero, this is exactly gives the usual bar plus and uh, bishop grammar volume comparison. Okay, but on the other hand, this, uh, and in the, uh, as usual, uh, let me see, as usual, we can, in this here, in this one, if we let the small r go to zero, then this ratio become, because it's a Riemannian manifold, this goes to one. So if I move the one over, so whenever the integral curvature here is bounded, I have the volume is bounded. Okay, so this upper bound, or the, you do not need any assumption. As long as the integral curvature is bounded, the volume is always bounded. It cannot go to infinite in this case. Okay, so that's the uh, uh, so first, this part. Whenever this is bounded, the volume is always bounded. <coughs> okay, so yeah, last part is about the volume doubling. Then we need this quantity we had before is part of the rich curvature below zero and the normalized power and make it a scale invariant. Whenever this is small, we have the volume doubling. Namely, we can control the volume of the small ball from the bigger ball. The ratio is so. And this smallness condition is necessary because if you just bound it, we see in the example, uh, even for sectional curvature, it does not uh, hold. Okay, so how do we, uh, yeah, this smallness, it's necessary, but how do we make sure it's satisfied? Uh, one case is, uh, okay, so another point is, yeah, in this we all need the power is strictly big than n over two. When p is just n over two, this does not work. Also, there's lots of counter examples you can make. You can p equal to n over two, and this is a very small, and actually those metrics are kind of dense, you can make it, so it's very bad in general. You need an additional assumption to get it. Okay, so how do we make this, as we have been said, the condition is not so easy to satisfy. Uh, so, but if you have some, yeah, non-collapsing condition or volume growth condition, then this condition is automatically satisfied uh, in some sense. Whenever the ball is small, this will be automatically small. Namely, if you put the volume growth condition, then anything, if you just have rich bounded, you don't need a small, because this power 2 minus angle P is, P is big than N over 2. So this is a, a power is positive, so when big R small, this will be automatically small. So in, the, in this case, then this is a, just a bounded rich curvature automatically give you smallness and everything. So in the non-collapsed case, it automatically satisfies. Okay, so this is the uh, comparison part. Let's see, any questions? <coughs> Okay, so also uh, because we have the comparison, then the smallest condition for some r, it always gives you some all the r. So later on, I'll just do the scale it so that when r equal to one, and that's uh, make the assumption. Uh, okay, so so uh, previously it's about uh, the comparison. Actually, in the talk, I'm going to concentrate on the so-called isoparametric constant. <coughs> Okay, uh, the isometric constant I uh, will work on is the ratio of, so for any domain in the ball, so this is a isoparametric constant of a ball. This is, you look at any, this is a Dirichlet type. You look at any domain does not touch the boundary and you look at the ratio in some sense. Let's say if we fix uh, the perimeter, right? Then you want to maximize the area, okay? So then, so uh, in this case, what's the maximum possible? So that's the isoparameter. And this is a scale invariant one. So in this case, 
If this power is just one, that's usually refer to the Jigger's constant, which actually we going to first. That's how we're going to control. First we get Jigger's constant, then we get the power in this case. So this is a uh, Dirichlet type. <coughs> in the uh, Dirichlet type, this uh, <coughs> sorry. Uh, so we interested actually. Lo Bing already mentioned. If you have pointwise rich curvature bound, then non-collapsing, then you have so-called uh, Sobolev constant, which is equivalent to isoparametric constant. So that's uh, uh, in the Crocus book on this. So that's extended by Dinyan to integral curvature. So instead of the uh, pointwise rich curvature, here we only need an integral curvature. And, but of course, we need an integral curvature as a part which is a small, it's not too big, otherwise it's not true. So the error, whenever error is small, then this isoparametric constant is controlled. Okay, int. But so here the, a big assumption is non-collapsing. <coughs> now of course, so we are interested in collapsing, so this is part hopefully related to the conference. In the collapsed case, so this is not the right quantity to consider, or well, exact, because if you have this bond, Actually, it automat it goes back. The volume is also has closed, so it's equivalent. So instead, we'll consider this kind of uh, estimate. <coughs> the isoparametric constant is going to have quantity, but you have the volume, and I we call this kind of normalized isoparametric constant. So, but so this here, yeah, there's no assumption about the volume lower bound. But uh, uh, the assumption here in his work, the Gallot proof is the manifold has to be closed. Okay, it's uh, or it's not local. Then if the error is small, you still have the same isoparametric constant. Of course, it's not. We said it cannot be exactly same because if the same, then we have the volume lower bound. So the key is you have this and divided by volume, and this volume, the power here has to be precisely one over n to be useful. Some the only work actually is not uh, uh, not the optimal power, and Peterson and Sprouse use the volume comparison we had to improve the power to one over m. <coughs> but this is only for closed manifold. Okay, so for a while I was looking for uh, because these are very useful uh, Sobolev constant because isoparametric is equivalent to Sobolev, so it uh, only to look for local quantities, uh, namely. Okay, look for this. Also works for collapsed, but instead of assume closed, just a domain, namely local Sobolev constant, but without basically Dian's result without the volume assumption. Okay, so that's in the uh, recent work. Uh, uh, this is okay. I guess still this is not the recent. Work. It's still some early works. Uh, uh, which okay, this there's actually uh, mentioned there's lots of quite a bit of the early works, uh, and this might a uh, little bit tie to this uh, so-called collapsing or almost flat manifold theorem. Uh, Gromov's almost flat manifold theorem we also heard in the morning. If, if the section of curvature, let's say, is very small, pointwise, then it's infra new manifold. So now you can replace the section of curvature by integral curvature, but p is big than n over two. <coughs> And this conjecture is that p equal to n over two is also true in this case, but it's still uh, open. Okay, in the in this this result. <coughs> okay, so the general, as we said, there's lots and lots of works uh, in this direction. I want to list the general philosophy is if this is small, then many result can be extended uh, from pointwise to uh, to integral case. But it's not obvious. I mean, say, okay, sometimes from analysis, say p equal to big n of two, and everything is just automatic. I just want, and it's really there's still lots of uh, things cannot be extended yet. We don't know if it's true. Or I want to mention like uh, the classical uh, bonnet my theorem can be extended to integral curvature, but the Cinch theorem, you know, for sectional curvature, that does not work. There's no integral motion, so do need uh, it's not uh, as automatically as you would think. Okay, so say so Cinch theorem does not hold. <coughs> okay, so now uh, let me go back. Uh, come, come to the uh, yeah. So far in this case, 
Most <coughs> all the results require non-collapsing because of the Sobolev constant require non-collapsing. <coughs> so the uh, <coughs> yeah, I already said so. Integral version of Sinchi is not a uh, hold. <coughs> okay, so uh, we said so recently uh, we this uh, just appeared in uh, advanced in mathematics. Uh, we kind of uh, obtained Dian's local Sobolev constant estimate without uh, the volume non collapsing assumption. Okay, so precisely, uh, so this is the same Sobolev con definition. So, well, actually, not sorry. It's the isoparameter constant. So, isoparameter constant, which measures the area, uh, the volume divided by the perimeter fixed, is controlled. Again, this is volume. It's the same as uh, if we look at it, it's the very same as a Galois result. <coughs> it's the same as this one. <coughs> this constant, except here, it's, uh, he has assumption is closed. So we have the same uh, uh, estimate, but only for local. <coughs> so the power here, again, is also 1 over n, exactly. In the, Okay, in, and okay, so we can let's think i equal to one. So this is a, uh, this is a, uh, well, since this is a scale invariant, you have the volume, so you have the r here to make this uh, scale invariant, so quantity. <coughs> so the isoparameter constant is uh, useful. We said it's equivalent to Sobolev inequality. In general, you don't have the volume, so it's a, so what is the change? For this isoparameter co constant to the Sobolev is that in the Sobolev inequality, you look at the average. So before, usually we just look at the integral. In order to use this one, you look at the average of the Sobolev inequality. Okay, so you both sides, so the volume is uh, both normalized in this case. So this uh, isoparametric is exactly equivalent to the Sobolev if we have normalized, okay? So when we, so that's later on, every time we do it will be the normalized. So here it's, there's no collapsing, non-collapsing uh, assumption and so on. Okay, any questions so far? That's statement. <coughs> uh, okay, so uh, as Ruby mentioned, uh, uh, usually once we have solved the constant, yeah, we can do lots of things. So I will maybe not list uh, uh, the statement. Maybe give you. So now we don't have to assume no collapsing assumption. You have this. Once you have solved the constant, usually you can get the just as a pointwise rich curvature bound. Those cases like heat cone bound, uh, the Hanaka inequality, or the maximal principle. You got gradient estimate. So all those tools because. Uh, uh, used to, well, it's not, most of the time before the proof is use maximal principle, now you try to use Moser iteration to do it, okay, in the, <coughs> so you can get the, uh, the access estimate in the, okay, all of this with uh, also uh, Chiga coding neighbors hashing estimate on the distance function, the L2 estimate on the, or actually approximation of the distance function in this <coughs> uh, so before okay, this theory, it's actually still not uh, complete as we satisfactory. Although we got the hashing L2 estimate, but to complete, we see also need to extend this uh, Chiga uh, Codian's uh, segment inequality, and we have been trouble in still have been trouble. Even though back in the when I did it with uh, Peter, we already trying to extend to integral curvature. And we didn't, and this time we sort of got it, but still we haven't got it yet, <laughs> okay? So it's still not uh, satisfactory. In the non-collapsing case, the, although the actually the sigma inequality can be extended so that it works. So, but in the collapsing case, that's still not uh, completely done. <coughs> so now let me just uh, state as a gradient estimate as an example. <coughs> So uh, gradient ex as, uh, estimate is, so now if, we, again, the error, if it's small, so in, this is, uh, I think, the most general we can think about. Uh, if I have the Laplace function equal to f, so this go back, to, like say, Zheng Yao's uh, harmonic function gradient estimate, that's when f equal to zero, right? Then you have gradient f, 
is bounded by the gradient f of the function bounded by the uh, the integral of the function u in this case. In the, well, in the bound, in the case. So now, if we have, you, that means we can f does not have to be zero or constant. Most of the time, useful is zero or constant. Then the f here is also yeah, it's an integral. So I using the norm star. Star means just as a, a normalized norm in star of. So. Uh, We use a normalized norm a lot. So f of star of p is okay. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, otherwise, uh, most time when they normalize, they always write it out. But then we don't want. To, so we put a star on it to indicate it's a normalized. As we see. As we said before, the normalized one is more natural to capture. Otherwise, the assumption cannot be this uh, case. So uh, <coughs> uh, the notion that here the power of f has to be 2p, and this is uh, actually, yeah, the start is, I think it's bigger than 1 is enough in this case. And p also has to be bigger than n over 2 in here for the f. <coughs> So uh, the thing, yeah, right, instead of using the maximal principle, like in Zeng Yao's point-wise maximal principle, use the Mosa iteration to do it. Okay. So this iteration is a little bit more tricky because the f is not equal to zero in here, but uh, it also it works. Okay. Uh, the rest of them is kind of similar. <coughs> so now let me uh, go to maybe uh, the proof for. Uh, how do we obtain the? Uh, so it's divided into three steps. So uh, first step actually is quite reasonable. Basically, we say the measure cannot concentrate on small ball, and this is a uh, uh, okay. So the precise statement is that if I uh, choose a ball small enough, then this volume compared to the volume of the same ball, it's going to be less than half, right? So this cannot. Of course. Okay, so this is uh, uh, not not immediate already. Although it's quite reasonable to expect, because most of the volume comparison is this small. It gi it gives you lower bound, not upper bound, right? The volume comparison, they say, is greater or equal to the corresponding ratio of the model. So it uh, now we need an upper bound. On the other hand, so this is well expected, is uh, because it cannot because. It, you have lower bound everywhere. So if you have concentrate on here, then somebody else is not going to have lower bound. So we translate this upper bound to another point, which is far away, and that lower bound gives upper bound in the. So it's a volume comparison also, but you choose a. So we want to control this ball here. We choose a ball, another ball far away, and a. Uh, lower bound here corresponding to upper bound in the other point. Okay, so this mainly use volume comparison because we have volume comparison for integral curvature, and that's how we got it. Okay, <coughs> so that's the uh, why it's not yeah because the usual volume comparison it always gives you the lower bound. <coughs> so that's the first step. The second step is. Uh, <coughs> Uh, this I have a lot of thing encoded, did not uh, specify. Okay, so uh, <coughs> precisely, is this is like a, okay, uh, kind of a weaker chicas constant estimate with some error. This is uh, the error term. Okay, so I means uh, you, you usually you do have always some kind of estimate with error because you have the Laplace with error. So. To get the final result, the key is you need to absorb this kind of error into it, so that it does not uh, the error does not over control. You have to you have to control the error in this case. Okay, so this is a weaker. Well, you have the ball of the radius r, and right side is a two r in this case. So I call this is a, a hence a Kasha type, because you have the h is. A, Uh, 
Okay. So you have this H is divided over, and this is a ball of radius. So this uh, could be, does not have to be the X. And then the minimal part, so this divided into two parts. Then the minimal of the ball of uh, one part is uh, uh, controlled by the uh, area of the H. Sorry. Okay. So this is a ball okay, of the part, each part, the, each part is controlled just by volume of H. So uh, hence Akasha's uh, comparison, it tells the hypersurface, right, the volume of hypersurface and of the tube is controlled by volume of the high, uh, of the a, of the H itself. So this uh, it's really you need to use the gram of the same observation about you can choose in the set nicely such that the mean curvature does not come in. That's the key. So it's just the ball and the H. Okay, but the problem here is uh, it has an error turn, but the good thing is in this error turn in front we have the volume. And the volume compared to the first step we have, this volume I can change it to <coughs> this volume I can change it to ball of any size. Okay, I have. So therefore, I can replace that by uh, I can incorporate this inco incorporate this error to make it to uh, so to another. Uh, I can incorporate this error actually to this the left hand side. But in order to do this, I need to choose a ball such that uh, the volume is divided equally so I don't have the minimal going around. So this will be just a half. So combine these together. If I take a ball which divided by, uh, the ball H by equally on two sides, okay? So therefore the left hand side <coughs> in this will be just half of the volume of the ball. Now this ball and this ball is bigger, but by our you know, volume comparison, we can incorporate this one together into the other side. Okay, so therefore, uh, I think this is uh, the key estimate we need. Well, kind of local. So this is the volume of small ball is controlled by the hypersurface intersect with a big ball. Okay, so this is uh, like the Chigas constant. Uh, weak Chigas constant because this is need twice of the ball and this is a smaller ball in this case. <coughs> so all of this is uh, uh, okay. Once you uh, well, this is like in a very very special case, you have the isoparameter constant because this is like a boundary and this is the area, right? This is a boundary and this is the area, but it has to require that. The ball has to divide by H equally in this case. So in a very special case, we kind of see have the isoparameter constant. Now to take make this very small ball to the bigger ball we have in order to do this, and that's uh, there's a standard technique to do it. It's called uh, Vitalis Kavin lemma. <coughs> so how precisely uh, you for okay so. We want to do it, okay, so remember the, the order, the estimate we want is a ball, and you take any omega in here, we want to con compare the volume of the omega to the volume of the boundary of omega. So the boundary of omega, I'll just take this is my H in here. So the, it's divided into two parts, so this has a power minus one over n. <coughs> so we can think about this is the H the hype surface divided into two parts. So uh, you basically cover this omega at every point you choose uh, or you can always find because of the setup we have you can always find a ball or well, maybe a bigger such as that this H it exactly divides into two parts, which is uh, equal, so that I can use the, the previous estimate we have. So you find the smallest radius such that this uh, uh, ball is cut by H equally. Exactly. <coughs> Once you have that, you, then this uh, omega is covered by all those balls. So omega all is covered by these balls. And all of these balls 
is divided by h equally. Okay, so I can use the previous lemma. Uh, previous, uh, in this case, now I can use this uh, estimate in here. And then is a so called Vitalis carving. Once you have this carving, you can find another carving with a smaller, such that all the bonds are disjoint and there's a big boss and there's a, a volume comparison basically. Uh, volume doubling basically gives you the control in this case. So that is the uh, last part of the proof. Okay. I'm sorry, I think I went over faster than I think that's the last part. Okay. Thank you.